Okay, so um, this is the beginning of a grey horse portrait. She's got quite a fluffy winter coat and uh, in this particular part of the video I'm going to be concentrating on drawing her eyes. So I always start with the eyes um, when I start a portrait and actually the eyes of a horse that is facing you completely so when you've got that flat plane of the face facing you the eyes are really quite challenging to get right. Uh, sometimes we draw them too flat here, sometimes we draw them too bulbous, uh, sometimes we show too much of the eye. So the horses um, have their eyes on the side of their head, that's all to do with them being a, um, a prey animal. Um, some horses have larger eyes, some horses have eyes that are set further back, some horses have eyes that are set further forwards. You get breeds like Arabs that have got very large eyes and who tend to have their eyes set further forward on their faces. You then get sort of like the draft horses whose eyes are smaller and are potentially set a little further back. So um, it's really, really important when drawing horses' eyes to get the shape spot on. So my outline um, has been created using a projector. Um, I don't tend to put a huge amount of detail in. All of this, the marks that you can see at the moment are done with a warm grey for polychromos pencil um, but I don't add tons and tons of detail because I find that I get confused um, with all of the lines so I plot in just basics so you can see I've got sort of basic ear shapes um, basic forelock shape some basic areas here where I've got sort of like the hair where it's where there's a bit of a whirl going here and, and the hair direction but you can see that the eyes really there isn't a huge amount of detail in these eyes at all so I start with a very basic shape um, and I am now going to start outlining um, this left eye here that we can see um, there's a there's a really large area of eyelash in here as well which is really quite a bright white um, and I need to make sure that I leave that bit of eyelash in um, the the sort of purples and blues and everything actually in, in her neck area here which is going to be able to I'd be able to accentuate that because I'm using the white pastel mat I will be able to use um scotch magic tape and I will be able to use my slice tool which is a, a little ceramic knife just to um, brighten out any areas that get a little bit muddy um, so I am going to start where am I going to start I'm going to start up here and I'm actually going to pop in this little bit of her the eye here and this eye socket bit which actually isn't in the outline at all so I just need to make sure that that's in the correct place so a lot of my pieces are drawn with with many of the bits in freehand rather than tracing every single tiny little outline right okay and then I, that's fine and then we've got the eyelash that is that sort of shape and just making sure that you've got these elements in correctly and in the right places is then going to really help when you start to um, create the shading and um, colours and everything but getting your, uh, your actual outline correct is um, is paramount 
okay so the eye and again this is a even if you even if you trace the outline completely it still can be really tricky because you can get it spot on but it won't look spot on you can think it looks too bulbous or too flat so you kind of overcompensate and then when you start to fill in detail that's when it starts to look wrong um, so you've almost got to trust what you're putting in and the and the outlines that you're putting in you need to trust that that it's going to be right because it looks so different when you add in all of that detail so i've i've actually got a little bit of the head collar poking out here which i'm going to leave out if i can find my my putty eraser i'm going to leave this out because i think it's going to be distracting um to the final piece and that's kind of where your um, artistic license comes in so you've got you've got this lovely eye here and then you've got this dark piece of leather just poking out and there's only ooh, about a centimeter of it so actually I, there's no need for it um, because the rest of the halter you can't see anyway so i'm going to leave that out um, and it's the, just those little things that you need to think about with with your composition uh, you know is it is it helping the composition do i actually need it in and um i don't think i do um, there's some really nice bits of stray hair and um the lower eyelashes here on horses can be really quite long those are going to look really nice against the darker neck uh, so but they will come in later with a scalpel right so this lower eyelid here so I've got quite a sharp pencil and I'm using the dark sepia. Um, quite sharp. And I'm plotting these lines in very gently. And this eyelid here. It maybe would have been easier for me to um, trace this potentially using like the trace down uh, product, which I which I have used and I do use on occasion. But my issue with the trace down is, I think it's a fantastic product, but it can get really messy and you can get elements of the graphite left on your paper which is i think fine for smoother papers but on the pastel mat it can leave marks that don't come up so if you're not planning on adding a background to your piece you can have smeary marks that don't that don't come away um or if you're doing a gray horse like this you can't erase the lines particularly well and that's that's a that's a bit of a, an issue for me so I, I try not to use the trace down uh, using this particular paper um, and I'll, I'll prefer to use a projector and just plot in um, my main areas that I can then use to help me sort of pinpoint where other areas need to go um, I don't think it matters what you use at all. Um, I don't think that anything you do to help yourself is cheating. I just prefer not to add too many lines just because I get so confused. So actually, if I was, if I wasn't uh, doing commission commission work and it was all sort of just for for, for my pleasure and, and as a hobby I would prefer to freehand everything um, and I wouldn't bizarrely start with an outline I would I would go I'd probably start on an eye and work out and that that that's just how my preference would be but 
because my main work is commission work um, I have to I'm not trying to get things out as quickly as possible but I have to make my work as cost effective as I possibly can um, so getting the outline down you know it can take a long time if you're freehanding it so if if I use something to help me I know I can freehand so I don't, I don't think you know that's not an issue and, and actually even if you can't freehand it doesn't matter because a lot of the well the everything is to do with the the inside but if you don't have your perfect outline if everything's not in proportion well it's going to look a little bit it's not going to look right so you know that the, the outline is is important because it needs to look in proportion and correct okay so you can see i've i've used the the the, the small amount of lines that i have plotted and i've added in more so i've now got a pretty good representation of my eye now so i'm always looking at my eye always looking at my reference photo I'm just making sure that everything's in the right place. Um, and these eyelashes are a lovely bright, oops, lovely bright white. Um, so I'm going to try not to add anything into there. I may well add a bit of blue or something in a little bit later, but I'm going to try and keep that area there uh, really nice and clear. Um, and then I'm just going to come in and just start to increase the intensity so I'm going to start just picking up on some of these outlines always looking at my reference this is going to be a crease, so once I start to add some tonal values in here, it, I can I can deepen that crease slightly, but I just need it to be in the right place. Okay, and then I can start just to add in a little bit of shadow in here. just where these eyelashes are sitting and it's more of a visual thing rather than adding really tight detail So the eyes are quite dark on my ref photo that it's not it's a good photo it's a nice clear photo but there's not a huge amount of color in there so that that's going to be a a bit of a a bit of a challenge in itself but there are some nice um light areas so it's going to be a case of not drawing all of the details in the eye but drawing in um the the light and the dark and just getting those tonal qualities right which can actually be harder than drawing in the if an eye is highly detailed right. so i'm using very soft pressure throughout so that i can lift it off if necessary I'm just going to go my putty eraser is brilliant but the um, the scotch magic tape is a better way for me to be able to lift out um, tiny details so um, it's just a roll of tape 
um, taking a piece off and I hold it on the end of my finger Oops, don't know you can. hold it on the end of my finger here um, and it's um, smooth on one side sticky on the other and I just lay it over the area that I want to lift off some pigment and either using a stylus or a sharp pencil or or a really blunt pencil if you want to do um, I'm just going to just draw over this area and just lift out the pigment that I've got here and you can see it takes off a controlled area and um, it's a really really great piece and actually whether you can see that on there you might be able to see it you can see here where it's actually taken off part of the pigment all the way around it um, th that's okay because it hasn't lifted it all off but that's something that you need to bear in mind when you're first starting out because you haven't got that many layers down and this and the magic tape is quite sticky it will take off the pigment surrounding the area that you want to take off so if you want to, to kind of n not take as much pigment off then just take some of the tackiness off the paper just run it over the back of your hand and take some of the tackiness off but as you build the layers um you won't take as much of the pigment off uh, so that's a, a tool that I use all of the time and I find it a really, really useful, especially when you're using white paper. Right, okay. So what I think when you first start to work on a piece, even though you, well, I will have thought about it beforehand and I'll have, I'll have decided what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it, when you actually come to put pencil to paper, it it can it can take a while to get into a new drawing, um, especially if you go from one piece to the next. Um, so I, for me, I tend to do a lot of thinking as I'm as I'm drawing, and I'll kind of go over areas that are that are already down. Um, you know, just to kind of sort of, and, and I'll be thinking as I'm going over those areas so that they're areas I don't need an awful lot of thought for doing. But because my hand is busy, I, I find it easier to, yeah, so I find it easier to work over other areas slightly as I'm thinking about the next bit, how I'm going to tackle the, 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 the next area of the horse. Um, so I'm going to add in, I'm going to start down here and start to add in a little bit of the shadow down here on this lower eyelid. With eyes, I do like to get the outside structure right first before filling in any of the um, uh, iris detail. Just because I think if you've got the outside structure spot on, it gives you a really nice base. To then work on the inside and you know that that outside bit is correct working on the white this is white pastel matte board i'm working on working on the white pastel matte board is very 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 different to working on the other colors i tend to use the white and the dark gray and the the white even though it's the same product it's the same manufacturer it's a it's like working on a completely different surface. It's much smoother. It still takes a lot of layers, but it works in a very different way. So your blending comes comes far easier. And you almost have to be careful that you don't over blend on the on the white. Because it can go a little bit smeary. So you've, it's almost like you've got to use slightly different techniques when using the white pastel mat than using the, um, the darker colours. So I'm leaving this, this bit of the eyelid here kind of a little bit clear, but I'll, I'll be coming in with some sort of other different greys and everything a little bit later. And I'm going to swap to using a... cold grey five here and I'm just going to add use the cold grey five 
round this side of the eye here. I can't see quite in the photograph how far this comes. I've lightened my photo up, which is a useful thing to do. Um, so if you go into your, just on your phone or your iPad, and you edit the photograph, you can just lighten up um, the, the photo so you, you, you could see, hopefully see more detail. Um, or, you, you know, it, it makes it a little bit clearer, especially if it's quite a dark photograph. So that's something that I will do if I feel the need to. And then obviously, you know, once you've plotted in areas, you can then go, go back to the original um, photograph. But just plotting in these areas around the eye are going to really help me visually when I come to actually fill in the, the eye detail here. And I'm just going to layer over the dark sepia in here. So I find with the white paper that I I tend to put in details much quicker than I do with the darker paper and, and that's just how the that's my preference but it's also how I feel the paper works. Not that I'm going in with any particular detail here. But it's quite mottled very 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 short fur going around this eye area here. So I'm literally just sort of popping in those those marks because then I've got something to work on. And if I if I put something in that I don't feel is is working, I can I can lift it back out again with either the putty eraser or the magic tape. I'm going in the direction of the horse's fur where I can see it in the photograph. It's not particularly clear, but I kind of know that it's kind of it's going this way. And then when I get up here, it's kind of going that way. Um, so I'm making sure that my pencil is sort of following the fur lines there. And then we can look at building this little ridgy bit here. And you can see I'm using very, very soft pressure. I would say this is the softest pressure that you can use to actually get a mark on the paper. So if you practice with your pressure on a separate piece of paper and just go in with the softest, softest pressure that you possibly can create on the paper so that the paper is literally, the pencil is literally just skimming over the surface of the paper. That is the pressure that I'm using at the moment. And that is the pressure that I tend to use on the first few layers of the pieces that I'm drawing. So I'm going in with quite a, well, it's this, it's the um, cold grey five. Um, I will eventually want to add in some colour in there. And I probably use blues and um and purples actually but I'm going to wait a little bit in fact I'm not going to wait I'm going to use so um, dark indigo polychromos dark indigo and I'm just going to go in here just I'm, I'm looking at my photograph and I'm not specifically seeing dark blue, but it isn't a flat grey either. So my feeling is that actually introducing uh, this the, the dark indigo, which is a really, really good neutrally blue and a, and a really great alternative to using black, especially around the eye area. This is going to give it a little bit more oomph, if you like, 
rather than continually using the greys which is just going to make it a little bit flat and boring. So, so I'm following my reference photo. You can see as well using the white pastel map very early on you can get some very nice clean sharp lines. Um, I don't usually advocate doing sharp lines on animals because I, d I don't feel that there are any hard, hard, sharp lines. But round eyes, it is important when you're drawing the um, eyelids and everything like that, that you do get that lovely, that lovely crispness to some of these creases. You'll find if you use the darker colour pastel mat that the, the sharp lines won't come until later on when you've got for more layers down as the paper becomes a little bit smoother. And I think that's one of the, um, the myths that you hear banded about about pastel mat. I think a lot of people are starting to use pastel mat now. Um, it's a fantastic surface. I think you do have to work on it for quite some time before you you really get to understand how it works for you because everybody works differently so how i work may well not suit how you work but i think you get to work out how the how the paper behaves for you and how you want to use it um, but i think one of the myths that that um is banded about about pastel mat is that you can't get really nice sharp crisp detail and you absolutely can um, I mean you just have to look at some of the artists work who use pastel mat and you think oh my goodness how you know how have they got especially when you first start how on earth have they got that fantastic detail and it is literally about the layering um, you know you add your colors down and you keep on adding and you keep on adding and you keep on adding and then the, the layers start to come later on, uh, the, the, the details start to come later on because the layers of colour that you're putting down start to squash the tooth down but you've got the lovely detail that you can put in on top of all that gorgeous tonal, the, the gorgeous tonal values and the lovely colours that you've already put down so you've got the best of both worlds really So this is quite quite sketchy, um, what I'm putting down here, but everything is in the right place. And I can build on this eye and I can build on the layers and the colours and I can start to add in a little bit more detail. It's funny, I use the the white pastel mat so differently to how I use the dark grey. With the dark grey, I would be going over the whole area and plotting in um, some base layers, the, the, the hair direction. Um, but when it comes to using the white paper, I just go straight in. Um, that, again, that's just my preference. How I found it works better for me. And I think it's just, it's, you know, working out how, how you want to work. You know, we all pick up different ideas and tips and everything from different artists that we see. I think it's impossible not to believe, not to be influenced by, by, by what we, um, you know, what we see on, on social media or, you know, if you're watching videos or that type of thing. Um, but it's then about how you interpret what you see and tweak it so that it fits your particular style. All right, okay. So I'm wondering actually if I need to pull this in a little bit we need to pull this eye in a little bit more 
do 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 that. Okay. So I've just got my black here, and I'm just going to pull this. I think this needs to be. I think this here needs to be eye rather than eyelid. I mean, it's dark anyway, so it doesn't re it doesn't really matter at this point. I think that's definitely, and then I can just darken up this area here. And these are just preliminary stages. You know, we're we're gonna once we've got this sort of part of the eye done um, and the other eye then we can really start to um, build on the fur detail. And, and as you move through the portrait, you can start to build up. But as long as you've got the basics there, that's all good. OK, I'm just going to add a little bit down here. This is purely, for my benefit, just visually, just so I can see how the The fur is working. I'm using very, very light pressure again. I'm literally just adding just a tiny bit of fur detail in here. That's all I'm doing. And under the eyelid as well. It's 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 like following um it's like following a map really. You might be this well, I'm I'm the sort of person who kind of likes to know um you know point not points of interest but you know if if i'm going somewhere i don't just want to see the tiny bit of where i'm going at that immediate moment i want to kind of see in 10 miles am i going to be turning off or you know which direction am i going to be going just so that i can i've got it in my head and i'm prepared and that's kind of what i'm doing here um i, I want to see when i'm filling other bits in what's around it so that it's all it all works nicely together um but just just a you know an area around it i don't need to go crazy mad and get everything in here to, to be able to sort the eye out but just getting these areas around here correct that's that that really helps me and again it just it gives me time to think as well about how i'm going to tackle the eye which we're going to make a start on now. And again, I'm going to use my dark indigo. Um, it's a good good base for, for creating the eye. There is a, a lot of blue in there. Um, and I'm just going to start plotting in shapes. And I'm going to go very softly. So I'm not going to... What I'm not going to do is go in with really hard pressure and burnish to try and get a shiny eye. I'm going to create almost like a ghost eye to begin with and then build up the layers and build up the shine that I can actually see in the eye. So we're going to start off with this outside bit here very lightly. And if we go wrong, it's fine. Um, eyes are the for me the most important part of a portrait so doing them at the beginning means that if everything goes a bit wrong and you can't correct it you can start again um, and you don't you won't have wasted a huge amount of time the worst thing must be is if you've left the eyes till the last and you start to create the eyes and they all go wrong and you can't get them right. I mean, that that just must be awful, which is why I tend to do my eyes first. And then at least if they go wrong. OK, so I've, I've gone over that a few times. It still is very, very soft pressure. So if I came in here with my Scotch Magic Take, I could, I could basically lift all of that area off if I wanted to. I can see some some really d sort of dark reddy browns up here, um, but I, I'm gonna 
I'm going to put them in in the dark indigo and I'm using really really soft pressure and I'm just going to plot in some of these shapes there's a there's a higher sort of like a catch lighty bit here which I'm going to miss out and I might even come back in there and lift it out even more if I need to do Now, if you wanted, you you can you can trace all of these shapes in. Actually, you can't you can't see them very well. So unless you've got a really good printout, um, you 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 might struggle. The projector I use is a um, it's called a Copy Cake 300XK. And you pop in a hard copy photograph, picture, printout, whatever, um, into sort of like the little casing at the top, and it's um, it takes sort of up to six inches. So you you pop in your your photograph, and it, you turn all the lights off, and you turn the project well turn the projector on before you turn the lights off because otherwise you'll do what I do and then trip over and. And it's and it's not good. Trip over the dogs and it's all dark and it's terrible. So turn your turn your turn your projector on first, um, and uh, and it's got this big light that shines down. So it's it shines down onto the table, um, and it shines the image. So there's a mirror in this sort of like the top casey bit. It shines the image down onto the board um, below. Um, and you pop your piece of paper or your board or whatever on there and you adjust um, the, the, the casing bit that you've got your photograph sat in. It goes up and down and it's got a lens and everything in it. And you adjust that until it's the right size and it is in focus. Um, and, and then you can draw around your image, which is fantastic, but unfortunately... And, sometimes the image is so small that it doesn't pick up the best of details when you have it printed out so it's quite difficult to see any specific detail um, that you are projecting so um, I've been testing it out using um, images that have been lightened considerably uh, which is which is fine but then you kind of lose some of the this this is kind of what I did with this, but then you lose some of this area here because it all merges into each other. Um, and I've also tested out um, creating a line drawing from my photograph um, and using Photoshop to kind of create a line drawing, which is okay, but doesn't doesn't work brilliantly. So my next test will be. To actually use something like trace down onto just a normal piece of paper where it doesn't matter if I get marks on it or anything like that and create uh, create a really good outline and then I can use my projector to project onto my good paper um, just the outline so that will be my next um, experiment so you can see I'm starting to get the colour into into the eye. Um, like I said, we, there's no specific detail in this eye. Um, you know, we can't see we can't see the pupil particularly. Maybe can just around here, but it's more a um, it's more, I think it's taken in the snow. Um, this this specific commission is. Um, is from Canada so I think it's taken in the snow and you've got sort of like a little bit of landscaping in there but not not a huge amount so all all this is doing here is just plotting in those dark areas and those light areas and this can be as effective as um, a, a highly detailed eye um, and all I've used is the, the dark blue at the moment so I'm going to move on to 
the walnut brown and actually I'm probably going to mix in sort of like some Indian red and stuff in there as well but let's let's just move on to the walnut brown to brown up this area here the walnut brown actually works really nicely over the top of the um, the dark indigo to get um, an even deeper sort of chocolatey brown which we can then come in again and use like caput mortem or something like that or the Indian red if you need it to be a bit a bit lighter and we're just you're still using really really light pressure just adding in so we're just gonna pull in And I think what we just have to remember is we're, we're just drawing shapes. That's all we're drawing at the moment. You know, for, forget or try and forget that you're drawing an eye and just, just start to pull out those shapes. Because if you start to think I'm drawing an eye, okay, so I'm just going to come in over these lighter bits as well because these aren't going to be all these bits here aren't going to be light light they're almost like a, a pinky color but but yeah so you know if you're thinking oh, I'm going to be drawing an eye it's almost like you, your brain starts to take over your pencil and starts to try and draw what it thinks an eye looks like and we don't want that my brain certainly we don't want my brain doing what it thinks it wants to do And it's just these these little things that kind of start to click, you know, as you as you progress with your with your drawing, as you start to develop. You, like I say, you pick stuff up from other artists, <clears throat> you, um, you you start to experiment yourself, you start to understand how things work, um, you know, and that's 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 basically how you develop. But again, you know, it's about being really open minded to ideas. I'm just thinking here as I'm looking, I'm just thinking, you know, actually. There's probably like a really big bit of highlight here that but it's quite a dark highlight, but actually we can we can work on that with some cold grays over the top of. Um, So I realise this is looking a little bit, um, a little bit like a zombie horse, really. But it it really is worth building up these layers and just taking your time a little bit with them. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the, the black just to um, pop in these really dark areas because then that will really help us when we want to put in the lighter areas you can see I'm using these sort of little roundy strokes with my pencil and that just helps to create an even layer of colour um, and of course the eye is round and you, you always want to be trying to get that lovely spherical look so using the, the roundy circles again really helps with that I talk about in, in most of my videos about how I, um, when I'm drawing something, I visualise what it is that I'm drawing. Um, so with fur, I visualise what the fur feels like, that type of thing. With eyes, it's about creating that lovely watery, glassy feel. So trying to emulate how that feels with how you're putting your pencil down on the paper. You can see how the the detail starts to 
come with, even with, with something as small as the eye with the layers. And the blocks of colour. So a cup of Morton Violet and a, a slug of um, lukewarm tea and we're just going to come in over the top of, again, using these little roundy. I think the more you do, the more you start to work out what, which pencils work for you. Um, you know, I think every artist has got their favourite colours that they use on a regular basis. Um, I think it becomes, it almost becomes a bit of a, you know, bit of a comfort zone really. You know, you know these pens, these colours work, so you're going to use them. So what I tend to do is every time I order new pencils, or I put a new order in, I'll... Um, I'll order a pencil that I haven't used before and then try and fit that pencil in or that colour in in whatever it is that I'm drawing. So I've bought the um, the Polychromous Gold, uh, Green Gold, which actually is a, a beautiful colour. I'm not sure where I'm going to use it, um, but... Um, I think I need to do because it's a it's a it's a lovely colour. So that's you know that's a little tip. You know, don't just stick with the colours that you always use. Uh, you know, try and um, try and introduce some some different colours. So I'm going to use the this is the cold grey too. Actually, I think this is too light but it's going to give us a little bit of a base and it's also going to just blend everything a little bit in these light areas. Sometimes we think that there's a really light area and actually it's not really light at all. It's really quite dark, but just building up to that can make it feel a little bit less scary. Um, you know, when, when we look at light areas, we, we almost almost always think that they, they, they are a lot lighter. Um, so just adding this in these light areas here just pulling it over so you've got the lovely layering capabilities of the pastel mat but you can I mean if I was doing this eye on the dark grey I would be adding a huge huge amount of layers in here but with the white it, it isn't necessary and in a way that's 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 a little bit scary as well because if you're somebody like me and you like to layer an awful lot you know half the time you're layering because you're trying to get to, trying to get an effect and then when you come onto a paper like this and you don't you don't necessarily need to have all of those layers in it can be a bit a bit scary because things start to happen really really quickly you can see that we're, we're getting a semblance of light over dark here um, you can still get a little bit of light over dark on the white pastel mat it doesn't work quite as effectively as the um, as the darker colors i think because they're more they feel more gritty whereas the white is much smoother Right, so you can see that that's that's really too it's much too light, much much too light, and and actually, 
I need to go in much, much darker over the whole eye area. Um, just having a squint at your, um, if you kind of half close your eyes and you squint at your reference photo and then you squint at your, your actual photo, you can see where the, where the real highlights and where the real darks are. Um, this area here is actually really quite dark. So we're just going to go over again, um, over all of these layers just to darken um, and start to richen up. So I'm coming in with the black. Coming in with the black here. into this bit I'm just darken all of these and you can you can I can see now as I'm as I'm drawing this the outside of the eye you know that really needs to be darker as well and actually This eyelid needs to be pulled back slightly too. So you're always making little little tweaks. Um, and this is it's always going to be difficult getting the shape right if you've got a sh photograph where you can't see um, you know full detail. <clears throat> right, so we're going to come back in here. Darken this up. So I'm using the black over the top of the other colours because it's it's gonna it's gonna create a really nice rich uh, dark. Actually, I'm gonna go over that again with the. I'm going to use my dark indigo. So this is just this is just preference really as to uh, how you want things to work. Um, but also, you know, what you can see in the reference photo. You know, you you might see something very different to me. I'm actually seeing a tiny bit of um, sort of some orangey areas here, but I don't want to, I don't want to go in with crazy orange, especially when I've used the, the black and the blue because in fact let's use a let's use a sanguine just to pull out that orange area there because the sanguine isn't going to react as much with the black and the blue um, for some reason it's um it's a better color when working with black and blue i'm just adding literally a um a hint of color in there that you can hardly see and then we're coming back to our come back to our walnut brown no, we'll come back to our, and it really is, every time that you look at your reference photo, it's almost like, oh, I can see a different colour, oh, that's that colour, and, and as soon as you start to build up and really start to take notice, that's when you start to see these colours emerge. And you can see how the colour builds up really quickly. And there's none of that grittiness that you get in the initial layers with the darker pastel matte. You know, it does go on very, very smoothly. Right, so I'm going to come in here. I'm 
I'm going to come in with a warm grey, I think, now. So, warm grey four. I'm just going to add the warm grey four, and I'm going to just really darken up these light areas. And then I can start to darken round it, and I can lighten again if necessary. But you really don't need really, really, really light lights to make it effective. So this is the dark indigo again. So just pushing those values slightly, but still using really soft pressure. going to try with the sky blue just very gently literally just touches touches of color So, um, so we need to, I need to soften this edge up here. This is all looking a little bit too, um, sharp. So let's just, coming in with the, with the black again, and I'm just going to soften the edges slightly. So I'm, I'm going into the area that I've already got and I'm just sort of pulling my pencil very lightly just over the edges to just almost blur out a little bit so you're expanding it but you're not expanding it with a sharp line you're just softening slightly yeah that's better and then I need to darken up this area here again so half the time, and something that I um, it, it, something that I find challenging and, and you know always working on is making your your darks dark and your lights light, um, you know just getting your contrast right. And I think a lot of the time that can be. The, the difference in a drawing, you know, is just to darken um, your darks right up. So doing that little sort of squinty eye thing really does help. And another another thing to to do that's really useful is to look at your reference photo and your drawing whether it's at finish stage or whip stage or whatever but converting them to grayscale um, a really useful exercise to do because then you can really see where your lights need to be lighter and your darks need to be darker and, and actually you can do that again you can do that on your phone um, you can convert you can convert to um, grayscale on your phone very easily This is the cold grey, um, cold grey one. I'm just going to come in here. You could use white if you wanted, but I'm just going to 
lighten up these areas but not like cra crazy light I'm also just going to lighten up this so really 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 light layers over the black just to soften it slightly um, and then I'm going to come in here and just so I'm not looking for a bright bright light colour I'm looking for this soft bit of light that's just sitting on this eye down here and this is what I mean about it being really quite um, tricky when you can't see detail but you can see that there's some light and stuff in in the eye it's it's really tricky to to get that um, that feeling of um, you know that the lightness coming through without it looking like um, a zombie So what I what I find I tend to do is you, you know you 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 tend to add and then take away and add and then take away and by building your layers like that you start to end up with something that looks a little bit something like okay so we're going back in with the dark indigo here. And just building up those areas again. There's no real rhyme or reason to what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get a feel from what I'm seeing on my photograph without it looking like a without it looking odd. So let's go in with the darker cold grey and just see if we can Let's get a little bit more of this highlighter here. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to go in with. I'm going to go in with my warm grey too. And let's hope that this is going to. So this is one of my favourite pencils. Um, especially for eyes. It's a very neutral grey. Um, it's like a, it's almost like a, a, a putty sort of colour, I suppose. Um, and it's really good for blending and for adding those extra catch lighty bits in eyes. It's almost like you've got to put the, the sheen over but still keep the colour underneath and that's what's the that's what's you know tricky. And it can take just one mark for an eye just to come to life and it'd be brilliant. Um, but sometimes it can take a while to get to that point. Right. 
it's supposed to be darker here. And you can see I'm using black, but I'm not using it with a with a real. I'm not using it as a black. I'm almost using it as a, a, a something to just darken areas slightly, um, with very light pressure. Which is just going to help. bit of tape just to pick out this tiny bit here. Let me just put these pencils down. That's something to be careful of as well is you know you end up with a handful of pencils and then it's very easy to drop them on your paper or mark them. Okay. You can see how that's lifted out that catch light really nicely. So I'm just going to fill in that bit there very gently. And then I'm just going to pull out a very tiny bit, see what happens. Here. And then darken these bits up. Mm, I can use my warm brown actually. Just darken these areas up. indigo just to lift this a little bit more so I'm going in with quite hard pressure here this, this is obviously part of the of the pupil um, and I need that to be a little bit darker So that's starting to look a little bit like, and then we're going to try very, very, very gently with the cadmium orange just to add a here and then I'm going to go back in with the walnut brown just to knock it back a little bit and this is this is the this is the thing about 
using colored pencils it's about adding in taking away adding in and it's not because you can't get it right from the beginning it's just the eye is a complicated structure and you've you've got to try and you know you, you can't just add uh, you know two or three colors in shapes and that's it it's being very gentle building up those colors and eventually it starts to look something like and this is what I mean about these eyes that don't have any detail in them are actually much harder to reproduce than the ones that do have detail and it's just about finding the right combinations of colours for it to work. Actually, that's not looking so so bad. Obviously, you know, it would have been would have been nicer to have had a photograph with, you know, a, a, a really nice detailed eye. But you, you know, you're not always going to get that. And, you know, it's it's about learning how to deal with all sorts of different um, references, different shapes and and knowing how to um, how to use your pencils to be able to create what it is that you see. So this I now is a combination of a, quite a few layers, quite a few colours, and hopefully is replicating what's in my reference photo.
and what's what's really nice is that because I've added lots of soft layers so there's no real hard pressure gone into any of this if I wanted to I could go in with my Scotch Magic tape and I could lift a lot of that pigment if I felt it wasn't working. I, could, I couldn't get rid of it completely, but I could lift a lot of that pigment and start again, which is a really, um, it's nice to know that you can actually do that. I'm just going around the the, the, um, the edge of this iris just to soften that out a little bit as well. We're going to have all of the, the darker fur there. But actually, this eye, I'm quite pleased with. Um, it's, it's tough trying to replicate something like this because you've got to get a you've you've got to get a happy medium of how the eye is working, but also it looking like an eye that's got reflections in it rather than a, a, an odd blob. Um, but knowing that you've got tools to hand that you can use if things go wrong, especially on this type of paper where I, I wouldn't recommend using a, a normal eraser on this type of paper because you, you will you will um, damage the surface. But I could literally take the whole of that eye out um, and start again. You'd still have the base of the colours there. You'd still... You'd still have, you know, parts of the colours there, but you would be able to brighten bits, darken bits, um, you know, add other colours if you wished. Um, you know, and, and knowing that is um, it's quite nice, really. I mean, you know, it would be a shame if you had to if you had to start again, but um, the options there if you need it. Because eyes are tricky okay so i'm going to use my warm gray and just come into this eyelid bit here just finish that off and we can come and change this you know later on um, i'm actually going to add a little bit more of the navy in here now, the, this dark indigo in here now, and just darken up these areas. But that basically is a good, a good, a good old start to this portrait. We can come in and lighten that again if we need to do, but uh, I'm quite happy with how that eye is. I'll probably come back again and darken areas um, and maybe lighten some areas as I start to add in. And probably as I start to add in the other eye. Um, but on the whole, I'm pretty pleased with how that's working knowing that there's a you know a huge amount of work left to do around it and obviously the, the, there's the other eye as well um but i'm 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 happy with this and i know that if i need to add some lighter bits or i need to add some darker bits there's still the capacity to be able to do that um Okay, I'm, I'm thinking that's a that's a good start. I know it it's not a you know it's not got some beautiful lights or anything like that in, but it's um, it's following the reference photo and it's working with the rest of the reference photo. The other eye actually has got more light in it, um, which I can, I'll be able to capture. Um, but but this and I think once the both of them are in there, it's going to it, it'll pull it together a little bit better. Um, but I think that's a good demonstration, really, of a tricky angle. Um, 
and working with an eye that's not particularly fantastically detailed but still being able to get something looking realistic so i hope that's been useful um and um and and happy drawing